All right, so I'd like to invite our first speaker to stage here in just a moment. I wanna go over the whole lineup again for you. So Michelle Wiseman is our first speaker. She drove down from Corvallis today, and uh, she'll be talking about tissue culture, which I'm so excited about. And Michelle, this is your second time on stage with us. Uh, we invited Michelle last year to talk about uh, pathology, specifically viruses and uh, bacterial and fungal diseases with cannabis. Uh, that is one of her strongest fortes. So pick her brain about a lot of stuff tonight because she's got a wealth of information. Um, second up, we've got Joshua Stroud from Conscious Cultivators. They do some amazing work with uh, different genetics across the board. Uh, really high standards, beautiful plants. I can't wait to hear what he's got to share with us tonight. And then of course, last up, we'll invite Louise Weinberg, master grower, author of Sun Grow, A Grower's Guide to Cannabis to stage. But without further ado, let's bring Michelle Wiseman to stage. Warm welcome, please. Thank well, thank you, Erica. Um, I'm excited to talk okay. with you all about a, a pretty new field in cannabis, um, which is tissue culture. Um, the first papers talking about tissue culture in the science uh, peer-reviewed literature came out in the late, uh, I think it was like 2009 or 2008. So this is a relatively new field and it's been um, explosive in the last few years. So um, actually, there was like a 500 page book that came out literally like six days ago on uh, cannabis, uh, biotechnology, and propagation. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit about that later. It kind of messed up my presentation tonight. <laughs> so I had to redo some things. But anyway, um, okay, let's see. Oh, going backwards. Going forwards, all right, micropropagation. So that's another word for uh, tissue culture. Essentially, we're propagating on a small scale. So just a quick overview. Um, what is micro micropropagation? I'll talk about the pros and the cons and how it works, and then um, I'll talk about a few different types of mi micropropagation, and then the um, most important part is I'm gonna give you guys some resources uh, to learn, some, learn more about it, because this is just a very, very small slice of the pie. It's a huge field, and I can only cover so much in 15 to 20 minutes, even if I talk really fast. Okay, let's see. All right, what is micropropagation? Um, essentially, we kind of cover this in the Q&A session, but it's growing uh, surface sterilized plant tissue in a nutrient and hormone supplemented medium in a controlled environment. So um, most important parts there is that you're growing something that's sterile. So um, everything that you grow in tissue culture um, is gonna be treated with some kind of disinfectant, whether it be bleach or alcohol. Um, there are others, but those are the most common ones. And then um, you're gonna be growing it typically in something with an auger base. So that's, um, it's like a, it's kind of like jello. And then you're gonna supplement it with uh, different nutrients and hormones. Um, and it, there's just a super wide range of different things you can add. And typically there's a, a long optimization period where you figure out what your plant does best with. So every type of plant does best with different types of, of combinations. So I'm gonna to talk to you about trying to focus on cannabis tonight, because I think that's what you guys wanna learn about. I mean, I can talk about blueberries, but anyway. Um, advantages. So there are a ton of, of advantages for my, to micropropagation. Uh, first of all, it's faster production of genetically identical plants. Um, so, you know, in the same time where you could produce, I don't know, 100,000 plants, you could produce two million plants in micropropagation because you're having exponential um, growth of your, of your plantlets. Um, so like I said, it's ideal for mass production of new strains and um, it also allows for disease-free production. So this is huge in the cannabis industry because I'm sure you guys have seen there's um, you know quite a few clones out there with viral-like symptoms. I think viruses are uh, widespread around here and this is one way we can kind of start producing virus-free material. It also um, allows for a limited mother stock. So, you know, you can have a box this size to store one strain instead of having, you know, a 1,000 watt light on your mother plant. So just imagine you can have like 100,000 of these boxes in a small room. Um, whereas, <laughs> it's not even possible with, with mother plants. I think you'd suck all the electricity out of town. Um, 
let's see. You also can have season independent production, so that's also true, obviously, if you do indoor production. Um, and then what's important for the future, this isn't, obviously you can't ship plants now, but with the direction we're going into, um, it'll be really helpful with the shipment of plants um, because it's a lot easier to ship a box than it is a, a clone. So um, that's what most industries do. Uh, the blueberries, raspberries, lots of different types of ornamentals, they'll produce uh, tissue culture plants and then they'll ship them all across the world. Um, easier to go through, um, you know, easier to pass inspections that way too because the inspectors know they're, they're sterile plants. Okay, also, tissue culture plants are usually more robust. Um, some of the papers that I've read on cannabis uh, indicate that they actually photosynthesize more. Uh, so that's a huge advantage. More photosynthesis means uh, more vigorous growth and more flower production, right? That's the end goal. Um, also, I said you can produce more plants in smaller areas. Um, you can also screen cells rather than plants for adaptation, advantageous characters. So um, herbicide tolerance, you know, uh, or you could do, well, I, I mean, you could do a wide range of different things. That's just the first thing that came to mind. Um, and then you can also cross distant really related species by doing protoplast fusion. Um, so you, that's probably not something you guys are gonna do with cannabis, but I thought I'd mention it. Disadvantages. So it's mainly gonna be limited to commercial production because it's very expensive to get started. Um, so then you're gonna be required to have like a lab set up which includes you know, places to produce sterile plants. So that's gonna be a laminar flow hood. It's gonna set you back $10,000. Autoclave, you know, pipettes, beakers. All these things are very expensive. We can do it on a small scale. Um, you're gonna be less successful, but I'll talk a little bit about that later. But that's the biggest drawback, right? It's a big, expensive startup cost. Um, also, there's been mixed results with cannabis. Um, typically with other plants, uh, such as hops, grapes, raspberries, they've been able to cure virus-infected material through what's called heat therapy, and then um, a meristem tissue culture. So um, essentially what you do there is, by heating up the plant, you're reducing the virus titer in the plant, and then you're sampling those very new cells from the apical meristem, and those should be vir uh, free of viruses. But there's been mixed results in cannabis, so that's kind of a drawback, because that's, that's a huge pull for tissue culture, but we're not, just not quite there yet. And then, of course, contamination. You know, you have to be a very detail-oriented person, uh, very meticulous to do this kind of work. Um, so I have a few contaminated, plant, contaminated plants up here, and then um, also a successful example. Um, at the end of the talk, I'll put it on my little table with all the academic literature to bore you to death um, that you can take a look at. But, you know, if you have contaminated boxes and you only have a few boxes of each strain, I mean, you could lose your mother, your, you know, your culture that way. So you have to be really uh, meticulous and clean. So how does it work? Um, so plant tissue culture depends on a few traits that plant cells have. Uh, first of all, totipotency, which is the ability for any plant cell to generate into an entire plant. So it's kind of like the stem cell of the plant world. Um, and then also the cells have plasticity, so that's the ability for plants to alter their metabolism, growth, and development to best suit their environment. So they can grow in soil, or they can grow in boxes with auger. Um, you know, they're, they're very versatile, and um, plant cells are, are really quite amazing because you can go from one cell, one cell to grow you know, an entire plant. So how does this work? Well, there's a few major hormones involved in plant tissue culture. We kind of talked about this in the beginning. Um, so mostly it's gonna be auxins and cytokinins. So auxins are responsible for stem elongation, promotion of vascular tissue growth, um, and the suppression of lateral buds. So when you're doing your topping of your cannabis plants, that's why you see it start to be bushy because um, the auxin suppresses that lateral growth. Um, cytokinins, they stimulate cell division and determination of cell differentiation. Um, and then, to a lesser extent, some tissue culture uses gibberellins. Um, they're responsible for a wide variety of different things. Um, but another thing I wanted to mention too, when I was doing all this research, I thought this would be uh, interesting for you guys, is that there have been a few academic papers that talk about um, sex determination in cannabis and different ways you can influence sex determination. Fun facts here. You can actually treat your plants um, with auxins 
to encourage feminization. So um, one of the most successful oxidants for that is indole acetic acid. Um, and then if you want to you know, induce uh, vasculinization, uh, there's gibberellins, typically GA3, um, can help do that. So anyway, if you're more interested in that, you should just Google it. Uh, there's some really good papers on that. Um, but I just, I hadn't heard about that, so I wanted to share that with you. Okay, so how does it work? Continuing on. So we're talking about uh, an agarose medium, typically. Uh, so that's gonna be semi-solid, solid, or um, sometimes it's gonna be a liquid medium. And we're talking about adding, uh, there's gonna be a basal salt and nutrients in there. And uh, those are just pretty standard across the line. In most plants, they have just uh, like a base to start with. And then mostly what you're gonna be doing is altering the amounts of the plant hormones that you add. Um, and that's gonna be the oxins and cytokinins primarily, like I said. So in general, when you increase the cytokinins and you decrease the oxins, you help induce shoot development. And then uh, on, uh, when you increase oxins and then decrease cytokinins, you're gonna encourage root development. And then finally, if you're gonna do kind of like equal levels of both, you're gonna try and uh, induce the production of callus tissue. And I'll talk a little bit about callus tissue in a few minutes. Um, and the advantages of doing that. Okay, this is a really messy table that is awful to look at. But um, I just wanted to point out really quickly that, you know, so there's a lot of good uh, literature, recent literature in the last few years, talking about different ways to do plant tissue culture. So um, with cannabis specifically. So I can't give you all the nitty gritty details, but I encourage all of you guys to go out there and look these papers up so you can test, you know, you can grow plants and tissue culture yourself. It's just it would bore you to death if I told you the exact concentrations of everything and it wouldn't make for a very good talk. So anyway, um, I have all of these papers on that table over there. Unfortunately, I only have one copy of each. Um, so if you are interested, go over there, you know, take your cell phone out, take a picture, and then, um, you know, you can look it up later on Google Scholar. And uh, that way, they give you the fine details of how to make these tissue culture plants. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the most successful uh, way thus far to uh, put cannabis into tissue culture, and that's gonna be through nodal culture. Um, this, is, this has thus far been the most successful way. Um, what you can do is you can take one node, so a node is, uh, you know, in between, so this is the inner node and these are the nodes. Um, you cut, so say cut, we cut node number one off, and then we're gonna surface disinfest that with bleach, um, and then rinse it off the bleach, and then we're gonna put this in this solid medium up here, and that's gonna be supplemented with different plant hormones, so typically auxins and cytokines, and then um, typically we're gonna transfer it once or twice, and then we're gonna go through a, a hardening off process, so this is all gonna be do, done in a sterile environment. Um, and then it'll take about six weeks to get to the hardening off process. So six weeks for it to root, and then once it roots, then you're gonna like gradually harden your plants off, kind of like you do when you're uh, growing things in the greenhouse and you bring them outside. So, you know, if you just bring them out right away, then they're gonna die. And then um, eventually what you have in probably about 50 to 60 days um, is a fully rooted plant that's capable of growing on its own. So obviously this takes a little bit of time, right? It's not as fast as cloning at this point in time, um, but it's also kind of an early early field. So it's, it's in its infancy, and I think that um, it's gonna become quicker uh, over time. And I think that potential for mass propagation is, is huge with tissue culture. Okay, so there's a lot of different types of tissue culture. That was nodal culture. Um, this, we also have a somatic embryogenesis. Um, there's a, different, a few different ways you can do this. Essentially, somatic just means like uh, one of your regular cells, like your somatic cells, so uh, a non-sexual cell, essentially. And you can take any piece of the plant and then use it as an explant. That's just a fancy word for cleaning it and putting it in tissue culture. And then um, you can either induce a somatic embryo or you can uh, induce callus tissue and then essentially go from there to regenerate your plants. So first we'll talk about synthetic seeds. So um, this is kind of one of the routes that you can take with somatic embryogenesis. This is also a very new field. Has anybody heard of synthetic seeds? 
Right on, yeah. I hope, you, I hope this is like blowing your guys' minds. It was blowing my mind. Um, anyway, so this is essentially like you have these like little mini sterile pieces of your tissue culture plants that you embed in um, kind of this like uh, calcium algal uh, covering and you encapsulate them. Um, the exact recipe you can find online if you're interested. Um, and then, essentially what you can do is you can store them in a germplasm, so like kind of like a genetic library. Um, you can ship those seeds, you can plant them in the ground, you can plant them in new tissue culture boxes, and, and they serve as, tip, as seeds. And this has been pretty successful. Um, let's see, I think it's been most successful with using I think they've been most successful with uh, encapsulating the nodes as well, um, but they've, they've experimented with 